Hi, and welcome back to Extra Extra, your weekly LGBTQIA plus news roundup in which I serve you all the tea so that you don't have to do the deep diving yourself. I know what you're thinking. Florals? For Christmas? Groundbreaking. This week, we're going on a journey from politics to culture, business and sports, and then we'll be finishing the video with your awards segment, as always, where I'll be serving you your sleigh and also your ew of the week. If you enjoy this content, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and without further ado, let's get into it. Because the politics segment this week is kind of heavy, we're gonna start things off with culture. So we have some good things to talk about first. Dan Levy's directorial debut film, Good Grief, is coming to Netflix on the 5th of January. I love Schitt's Creek, as I know many people and queer people do, which was co-written by Dan Levy. And this film now is written and directed and starring Dan Levy. Dan Levy and Luke Evans portray husbands, Evans's character, has died and the plot is about Dan Levy's character getting back on his feet and finding joy again in life with the help of his friends. Yeah, Dan Levy has said in an, in an interview after Schitt's Creek he wanted his next thing to be about friendship and about the concept of chosen family in the queer community and I've watched the trailer, I think it looks gorgeous. I already know I'm going to be crying a lot watching it and um, yeah, I'm excited. Alex Jones has released a new video game and it is ridiculous. I don't know if it's meant to be funny, but it is hilarious just for how completely bizarre it is. I'm gonna find some footage to show you on here so that you can see some stuff. Basically, Alex Jones is a very far-right conspiracy theorist, radio show host, and owner of Infowars, which is an online news outlet. Please take the word news with a very, very big grain of salt. And this video game is just it's a it's a side scrolling jump and run shooter um so think super mario brothers but with a gun your character is basically a very buff alex jones is also voiced by alex jones everything in this game is voiced by alex jones who is not a voice actor actually the voice acting isn't the worst thing about it you suck big tech lizard nerd i'm saving the page mission complete but yeah, you sh you're shooting zombie doctors who try to vaccinate you with massive syringes, like a witchified Hillary Clinton, yeah. which the video game calls the Wicked Witch of the West Wing. Oh, also there are rainbow frogs because of the whole the water is turning the frogs gay thing a few years ago. But none of that is the most bizarre thing about it the most bizarre thing about it is that as you walk through the levels and do the do the thing do the shooting randomly you'll get voiceovers from alex jones just spitting conspiracy theories at you so you'll just be like walking around with your machine gun shooting zombies and then out of nowhere you'll hear ah, paul mccartney that 50 years ago 911 was an inside job. They're turning the friggin' frogs again. It'll just be the most insane conspiracy theorists just randomly spat at you as you play. It's insane. So while I don't encourage that you buy the game because that's literally money in that guy's pockets, do go and watch YouTubers streaming and playing it. If nothing else, it can be a good laugh knowing that somebody has put hours and hours into this game. <gasps> An LGBTQ plus education in schools company called Pop and Ollie here in the UK has received a lot of scrutiny for what they do recently. Since 2019, that company has donated over 10,000 books to school libraries, books about diversity and gender nonconformity and um, yeah, diverse family models, etc. And uh, they give talks and and presentations in schools from year one to year six, I think. It's mostly primary school. The Daily Mail, which if you don't live in the UK, 
is this fear-mongering sensationalist newspaper, which I would urge anyone not to read and or believe. You can't sit with us! Have basically taken a jab at Pop and Ollie and, you know, are just spreading fear that the Pop and Ollie staff are teaching seven-year-olds the ins and outs of being transgender and talking about sexual <laughs> organs and all of that, which is not what's happening at all. Basically, all that they talk about in for primary school ages is that everyone is unique, everyone is different, being different isn't a bad thing. A lot of what they focus on is combating um, harmful gender stereotypes. Anyone can do any job, anyone can play with any toys, that kind of thing. Stuff that's really quite basic, but in an attempt to fight bias and prejudice before it forms, which is, I, I think, is a, is a beautiful mission. You know, information is power, and uh, it's all very age-appropriate. So we can all calm down <laughs> and move forward with our lives. In an interview with Variety, Billie Eilish has expressed that she is attracted to women. Not exclusively, but also. And since then, everyone has been asking her about her sexuality. Jim told me you could buy Gator online. Instead of her work, which has understandably pissed her off. The woman is winning awards for her songs for crying out loud. Can we talk about that instead? So I don't want to spend all that much time talking about her sexuality, whatever it might be. Instead, take this as an opportunity to say, we take women apart. If they are in the public eye in any way, anything that they do is scrutinized. What they put on their body, what they put on their face, who they date, who they don't date, if they break up, if they get married, if they have kids, if they don't have kids, all of that. That's just se sensationalist press right? But we do it to women so much more than we do it to men. And uh, yeah, in an Instagram post or a tweet, she said, you know, leave me alone, literally who cares? So let's. In Jordan recently, there's been a lot of military violence against the LGBTQ plus community, which has led to many LGBTQ plus activists having to flee the country and or close down their businesses and organizations. Homosexuality is technically legal in Jordan. However, it's a culturally extremely homophobic country with 95% of the population saying that they wouldn't be comfortable knowing that their neighbor is gay. Ew. And Police violence and state-organized violence against our community has become quite commonplace. This is anything ranging from interrogation and intimidation with threats over someone's safety and their family's safety, all the way to public humiliation and actual physical violence. I'm linking all my sources down below as usual. If you want, you can read interviews with people who are now refugees from their country and living in exile, meaning if they were ever to return to Jordan, they know that they would be persecuted there. Jordan is a member state of the ICCPR, which promises adherence to international human rights law. And part of the International Human Rights Codex is the guarantee of freedom of expression, freedom of speech and freedom of assembly, all of which are being breached by the government action in Jordan. This is illegal. And the country is yet to face any sort of negative consequences because of this. It's also important to note that both the EU and the US have a hand in funding and training the Jordanian security sector and have yet to sanction the country over their breach of international human rights law. All this to say, there are horrific things happening in Jordan. I am empathize hugely with anyone who's had to leave their home give up their livelihoods, give up the cause for which they've been fighting and for which they've built businesses in the past. And if you or someone you know is from Jordan and has this kind of experience, leave a comment. I'd love to hear about it, hear more firsthand experiences about it, because as I said, there isn't actually that much news coverage about it. I talked about Russia and the fact that the Russian state has declared the international LGBTQ plus movement extremist last week. <laughs> Not 48 hours after that ruling, Russian police raided LGBTQ plus friendly spaces in Moscow. From the articles I've read about it, I don't think anyone's been physically harmed, but I know that people have 
been publicly humiliated and the police have taken pictures of people's IDs. All of this being incredibly scary, being associated with an extremist organization in Russia can land you in prison for up to 12 years. I also spoke in my last video about how branding the LGBTQ plus movement without going into detail about defining what that actually means gives authorities a lot of, of grey area and vagueness to work with and it's already happening now. Surprise, surprise. You are now logged into the system as someone who is potentially affiliated with the LGBT community. The, sec the next time those same people would be caught out in a queer friendly space, they might be arrested. That might be an insane thought. It is to go to prison just for hanging out with other queer people, because that's basically what it boils down to. But that is the reality in Russia. And final mention about what's going on in Russia. A few articles, um, and especially people from within Russia, are claiming that what's going on and this, this targeting of our community in Russia is actually a scapegoating tactic in order to distract from Russia's failings, especially in the Ukraine war, which Putin sold to the people as an easy win, but it's already cost thousands of lives. And so in order to distract the population from that, we are now fear-mongering and targeting the queer community, who are literally not a threat to anybody. So the UK Parliament has tabled the conversion therapy ban bill. Tabled just means they talked about it for like half a day. Nothing's been decided yet or voted on yet. Votings will happen in March at the earliest. There were good things said. There were also really horrible transphobic things said. Ew. Sources below, if you'd like to read more about it, I'm not going to give transphobia that platform today and we're just going to move on to the US. In the US state of Arizona, a gay man by the name of Bernardo Pantaleon was brutally murdered and his body mutilated by three gang members who have since been arrested and have confessed. I don't want to go into too much detail. Basically, they've done horrendous things to Bernardo's body while he was still alive and also after he was dead. Also sent pictures of the crime to his family just to terrorize them, which is even going even a step further. The whole thing is already cruel and brutal, but it honestly makes me feel sick. So I hope all three of them get life sentences in prison because really people who are capable and willing and proud even of doing things like that should not be free, in my opinion. Bernardo's family described him as a kind, funny, outgoing, full of love person who didn't deserve what happened to him. To be honest, I don't think there are many people in the world that deserve what happened to him. US American politician Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has spoken out about the plethora of transphobic legislation that's being introduced in the US. Why are you the way that you are? A lot of the legislation involves grave invasions of personal privacy for all women. All of these laws are being sold to people under the guise of protecting women, when what they actually do is enable anyone to go, hey, I think you're not a woman, which then they're basically having to prove their biological sex <laughs> by exposing themselves. And now thinking about the fact that many of these laws are about trans students, we're literally talking about children and teenagers having to prove their sex by exposing their genitals. <laughs> I, I don't even have the words to say how invasive and humiliating that is. It is literally traumatizing. The reason I'm saying all of this is because I want to give Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez a big thank you for standing up for women's rights and queer rights. I can only imagine how exhausting it must be 
as a liberal woman with her head screwed on to have to deal with all of these small-minded, <laughs> hyper-conservative misogynists. A recent study has shown that the majority of people who choose to detransition after undergoing gender-affirming care don't do so because they regret their choices. Detransitioning is defined as discontinuing or reversing the gender-affirming care that you've received, be that hormonal treatment or surgeries. And the study actually showed that 60% of those who chose to detransition actually did so because they identify as non-binary instead of trying to fit into the gender binary of man or woman. The only regret that those people have is that they didn't have more information. Everything that gender-affirming care entailed, all of the risks and benefits of hormonal treatment earlier on, all of them speak about gender-affirming care as a positive thing, see the fact that they've explored gender in that way as a positive. And <laughs> this is really important because there's so much fear-mongering about transitioning to young or what if they make a decision that they'll regret a few years down the line. And I understand those concerns. It's been very difficult or still is very difficult to really talk about that because we don't have a lot of studies that have actually asked trans people about why they chose that, about what they wish had gone different, whether they have any regrets and what those regrets are. So as with many things, we fear the unknown and I'm glad that funding has been put towards understanding this better and I urge anyone who's watching this who has some reservations about gender-affirming care to read the articles about this below. It is our awards segment, which means I get to serve you the sleigh of the week and also the ew of the week. The Slay of the Week goes to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez for doing the hard work as a liberal, outspoken, intelligent, no-bullshit woman in US politics. She has women's backs, she has queer people's backs, she has immigrants' backs, she is everything that we need in modern day politics and that I so desperately wish we had more of. It's it's really important, especially in these current times that are so scary for all transgender people, that there are people like you who have their backs. So, thank you. And the ew of the week has actually been pretty hard to come up with because there have been so many eels. Extremely disappointing. But I think I'm going to award it to the Jordanian government for going after our community, who are not harming anybody. It's a, That's a fact. We're talking about LGBTQ plus charity leaders, people who have tried to provide safe spaces in Jordan for people who are, identify as queer, are being hunted down, <coughs> abused, <coughs> humiliated, outed to family members against their will, being forced to close down their businesses, being forced to pack up and leave the country with little to no notice. And I would like to extend this ill also to the Western media for their lack of coverage on this. You know, we're all busy focusing on Russia and the terrible things that are going on there, which we should, but the stuff that's happening in Jordan is at least as bad, and yet nobody, nobody's talking about it. On the contrary, the EU and the US keep funding their security sector. Oh, I'd kill for a good karma right now. I hope that next week's video will be a lot more lighthearted than this week's. I unfortunately have very little influence on what the news are that I serve you each given week. If you're still watching this, thank you so much for sticking it out until the very end. If you enjoyed this content, please go back and watch my videos from last week. If you haven't already, it's largely good news. If you enjoyed this content, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you back here again next week. Bye.